we're now going to look at how to import surfaces into a template file. So we've got our template file here. It's blank. There's not much in here, so there's no modeled information in this one. So this is a blank file which we can start building from. Now the point of a template file is it already creates surfaces, or it already has surfaces in it, as part of the attributes. So when we go options, and then attributes, we want this to be quite populated. So when we go to surfaces, there's already a fairly extensive list in here. And we can see that a lot of these surfaces have a picture at the end. When it's got this little picture icon, that means that there's a texture attached. So when I go to any of those, we can see that there's an image there. And that image is based on this texture. So what happens if you open up your template file and those aren't there? What happens if it says it's missing? What that means is that Archicad can't find the library where those textures are. Now remember there's different ways to create that. So if I was to have a look at this file, we see that the template file itself is 18.4 megabytes and that's pretty good in the scheme of things. A decade or two ago that would have been a big problem but now thankfully that's pretty achievable. Whereas when we go to the texture folder, now remember this isn't my entire texture folder, this is just a texture folder of those surfaces which you just saw, that on its own is 72 megabytes. So that's significantly larger. And if I was to compare that to my full texture library, my full texture library is 1.4 gigabytes. Now that's crazy. We don't want our file size to be that sort of size. So the problem with embedding textures into our library, so if you download an image and open it in Archicad, what you're doing is embedding in the library that makes that file massive, makes it slow, makes a big problem. We don't want to do that, so we only want to link our surfaces, our textures instead. So how do we do that? We go File, Libraries and Objects, Library Manager. Uh, you currently see I've got this one. This is that large one, 1.4 gigabytes. So we see that this isn't making the file size big. The file size isn't this big, even though it's linked. Right now we're just going to delete we're not deleting it permanently, we're just removing it from the library. So we're removing it from here. Let's just make this, do this wrong, so we can see what that looks like. So if I remove that link, if I stop Archicad from finding those textures, and then I go into my surface, everything's going to give us this purple and black checkers. So if you've seen these purple and black checkers before, you'd yes. know how frustrating this is. Beautiful. And that's just because the surface texture is missing. Now if there is a surface that doesn't have a texture, so again that little image shows us where there's a texture, so if I go to gloss red, it's still going to look gloss red, because there's no texture that's defining it. But wherever we've got a texture, we must relink it. Now we don't need to do it one at a time, thankfully. So, we'll press OK. File, Libraries and Objects, Library Manager. We need to re-add. So we go Add. We don't want to click into this and choose an individual image. So we see in here there's only one carpet JPEG in the carpet folder. Again, that's because we've taken the 1.4 gigabytes texture library and reduced it down to a much smaller size. So we want to select the entire folder and in this case the file structure name is very important. We don't want to change the name of this folder or change the name of the elements inside this folder because it's currently, it being Archicad, is using the naming sequence to help to identify and locate and link the textures with the surfaces. So in order to make sure that that's working, we'll wait till it's loaded. Then we'll go Option, Element, Attributes, back into our surfaces. Let's go back to the Gabion, and we see that texture is now back there, which is great news. We don't have to link that individually. If we were to change the folder name, folder structure, file name, it would no longer find it. 
So using the same naming sequence, not changing that part way through. And this is why, again, developing a system that's not going to change. So similarly, saving all of your images to a folder on your desktop is a bad idea because you're going to get frustrated at having a messy desktop. You're going to clean it up. You think you're doing the right thing, but you end up losing all of your textures. So we're going to the Surface Library here. I will make, I'll just make a new gloss color. So I'll start with gloss red. I don't have a lot of gloss color, so I'll say new. I'll make two, okay? Um, we'll make this one, we'll call this gloss yellow. Surface color, choose the color. So that's changed now in basic engine. Of course, I need to remember I need to update in Cine Render. So I'm going to update Cine Render from basic. So that way it's defined here as well. So I've made a new yellow color and I want to make one that's also got a surface because that one uh, is otherwise sort of cheating. So let's go to concrete. Let's use burnished. And we'll go new. And we'll change this to panel. Now I want to add a texture. So I'll go to my basic engine, I'll do it this way, search, I want to search in my texture folder, this is the big one, the 1.4 gigabytes one, so let's go down to concrete, and we'll go to panels, and this is a very large, very, very, very large surface, so we'll do this one it's ridiculously large. So we see that this is uh, 5,600 times 5,000 pixels in total. So if I do keep original proportion, I want this to be very large. So if I'm talking about each one of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight panels how large is each one of these yeah so that could be eight times what are we talking about maybe 1200 so we're talking about 9.6 meters wide maybe it could be even bigger than that so let's just do that we're going to keep the proportion and type in there 9600 I'm going to go to cine render and do the same thing here update from basic There we go, so we can see the lines there, so at least we know that it is the updated file. Press OK. Now, we've currently created surfaces, but we haven't assigned it to anything. So I'm going to go to my upper ground floor. I'm going to draw a slab. And use the concrete panel. And then I'm going to go to my wall and use my gloss yellow. It's pretty special. All right. So we have new surfaces applied to these elements. Let's select these, edit, copy, switch to our template file, And when we copy it across, we see that it creates that new surface in Archicad. So we have this concrete panel, that was a new name. And we have this wall with the surface called Gloss Yellow, which is a new name. So let's now go into each of these as surfaces. Again, remember there's a, a shortcut to do this. So if we go Alt, click, let's click on the wall first. Option, Element, Attributes, Surfaces. 
that looks right. Go to Cine Render. That looks right. So it's gone to checkers. The texture wasn't there. So we've basically told Archicad to bring in a new texture isn't there. The texture is not in the folder which is part of the library. So you can create a surface and copy it between files but you can't do that to bring in a surface. The only way that that would work is if we were saving it as embedded texture which we've said before is not a good idea. We don't want to embed it in the library. So what do I need to do? I need to find that particular image and copy that across into my new folder system or I need to link the library of where that came from. So how would I fix that? Of course the best way would be to go file, libraries and objects, library manager and add in the new folder. What was I missing? I was missing the folder called panels. So in this case it works because we've got it as a separate folder. So I need to add that one in there. So now we've got a folder called textures and a folder called panels. Now it's sort of an ish good way to do it. What I should actually do of course if the texture folder was mine in the first place I should unattach the smaller texture folder and reattach the larger texture folder. But if, if that's not what you can do in your instance then you just need to add a new folder with the elements in it that you need. Yep. So we've added that. We could press reload and apply. We'd only really do that if we'd updated the other folders. We don't necessarily need to do that if we're adding a new folder. And now as long as Archicad can find where that was, so let's do that again, alt. Which is basically based on the file name. We can see that it's now found that concrete panel file. Great. So, we now sort of see the problem with copying and pasting. So if we didn't want to do that, if that wasn't efficient, if that wasn't going to achieve the outcome that we're after, let's say we were just copying from one file to another, we could do that, and maybe we didn't just want to do two surfaces, we wanted to do a whole heap of attributes. How do we do that all in one go? How do we manage our attributes? Hint. Options, element attributes, attribute manager. So here we have all of our attributes. I've got layers, layer combinations, pens, lines, fills, surfaces, building materials, composites, and complex profiles, and all the others which I never change. So we were talking about surfaces, and we've now added surfaces into this folder. So we've added the gloss yellow and the concrete panel. We see that they're added to the bottom because they're the last two to add. So based on a number, that's how they're arranged. And of course, if we wanted to change that to be in a alphanumeric system, then we'd have them all back in there. So we've got gloss yellow. So we've added them all in. They're all in here. So let's say we now want to export all of our surfaces. We could do everything, but let's just do surfaces for now. Let's take all of our surfaces, so I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of my list, holding shift, and then append. Now look at this as well. Like I've said before, the problem, maybe the good thing with each of these elements is as we go further into this list, they're including everything before it. So we see that when we include surfaces, when we select surfaces, we're also including the fills that come with those surfaces. So that's maybe good, we just want to be thoughtful when we're then importing or re-importing. The problem is we can end up duplicating fills, because if I import surfaces to another file that's already got those fills, it's going to create doubles or triples. So we've got these in our folder on our left hand side, so this is very much like our organizer, right? So on the left hand side, Maybe that's our 
layout book and on the right hand side is our publisher. It's this same sort of idea. Left hand side is our file and the right hand side is what we want to export. So I want to use append and append means add them into it. So I've added them in. Now what do I want to do? I want to export this folder. When I export this folder, it's saving it as an XML file. That's the new name. It used to be called an AAT file, which was known as an attribute file. The XML file, from my understanding, is a more generic file name. So more programs would use an XML file. Where do we want to save it? It doesn't really matter. In this case, it's not a, a question of referencing because we're not constantly going to be referencing from a location where once we've done this we're literally going to import it basically opening up a container drag and drop the stuff that we want and then throw away the container Let's see where I am all right so we just save it here we'll call this surfaces from template 22 okay now I'll just do it straight here that doesn't really matter so we can now re-import in the same fashion of course we'd be doing this in a different file options element attributes attribute manager this time we see we don't have an option to export because we haven't copied anything across so we want to import, it would to me make more sense if these arrows were pointing in different directions, but one's pointing from off the page onto the page and one's pointing from the page off the page, so I guess that makes sense. Surfaces from template 22, all attribute manager files. So when I click here we see that it actually has different types. So we have XML, AAT, and all ARCHICAD projects. So it doesn't really matter what we leave this at in terms of enable. We can press open. Now, like I was saying before, the attribute manager file saves potentially lots of things. So we see on the right-hand side that it's only selected fills and surfaces. There's nothing else there because it's the surface that has an attached fill. Now what we can do is if we don't want to re-import or import the fills into the surface, we could select them and delete them. But if we needed them to make these surfaces complete, and if they didn't exist already in this file, that would be a problem. So I'd want to know, do they already exist? Are they the same name? Why? If they exist and they're a different name, they won't link. Yeah. If they exist and they're the same name, it'll duplicate and it'll create problems. So we have to be very careful with managing. For that reason, importing one thing at a time is frustrating. If you're exporting or importing your entire folder in one go, it tends to work better because in a way you can just replace everything. When you do it one at a time, you have to constantly manage. Or when you do a few at a time, you have to constantly manage how this process works. So to do that, let's just have a look. So we select all of the ones that we want to import, hold shift, and then we press append. So I add this to the list. It didn't ask me, do I want to? And we see that it's created one in brackets after everything. So it's created duplicates of everything. I don't want to do that in this case. If I don't want to do it, there's no undo button but what I have to do is press cancel. So be careful when you're using that attribute manager. If you were spending half an hour in there and then you press cancel, you'd lose everything you've just done. One more thing to show you in here. Sometimes I'll use the term purge because that's a nice, uh, let's go into the attribute manager. Sometimes I'll use the word purge just to say, well, let's get rid of stuff that we don't want. The problem is that purge means something very specific in ARCHICAD. In this instance, if I was to purge, purge would 
delete everything that's not ticked. Um, Only what is placed in my file uh, has a tick. Only what is used has a tick. Right. So purge will delete out of your file everything all of the different things, obviously only one at a time. Unless I go to all, then it will be everything. So I could very quickly say purge. When would I do that? I'd only do that if I was doing a archive file. I'd finished my project. I'm planning to never work on it again, but you never know because clients will then say, I want to do some revisions. But if I was doing an archive file and I didn't want to waste space, I wanted to make it as small as possible, I'd finish the project, I'd already done a lot of stuff, I'd purge everything that's not used, compress the file, file it away, again, trying to keep it as small as possible, and then if I needed to, what would I do? I'd open it back up again, and if I needed to just edit things, that would be fine, but if I needed to add stuff to it, I'd have to re-import a bigger database of my attributes to use just like I have to also re-import a larger database of my libraries. Same thing. So what's, this, what's the other step of this that we haven't talked about? How do I not just save my attributes, how do I save all of my settings as one file? When we save an archive file, or try to open up an archive file, so let's just do both quickly, file save as. If I save my archive file, that is file save as, Archicad archive project. I must go to options. It's very important that I understand what I'm saving. So there's a lot of functions here that I can choose. Do I want to include in my archive? What do I mean by that? What do I want to save and basically in this instance embed it into the file? So it's going to make the file size much larger. Do I want to include all background pictures? Do I want to include all parts of the favorites? or the loaded libraries. Do I want to include, so what does this mean? Loaded libraries means things that I have used. Favorites, of course, is things that I've saved as favorites. Do I want to include linked textures? Do I want to include properties in loaded libraries? Do I want to include all drawings? Do I want to break nested hot links and xrefs? So, Include properties in loaded libraries. Let's just clarify this. Include properties in loaded libraries. So this says loaded libraries here. Loaded libraries. That means the things that I've imported into my file. This one says include all parts. So that means it will include the entire library. So I don't want to do that. I could tick no, just completely no, or maybe if I will likely be using favorites, I could choose just favorites. I'd probably just click no in that instance. Again, if I'm saving it as a archive, I only really care about having the things that are in the file. I don't care about anything else. That's not the point of an archive file. So then I press OK. This is our file here. We can see that it's an archive because it's got a belt around it and it's got dot PLA at the end, PLA, Project Archive. So what do we do? How do we open that up? Open with, this is the most important window here. When we open up an archive, it's going to ask us, do we want to do one of these three things? Do we want to read the elements directly from the archive? Read elements directly from the archive. What does that mean? That means we're effectively embedding all of the libraries in the file. Not a great choice. Do I want to extract elements to a folder or do I want to select a library? If I knew that everything that I wanted was already in a folder somewhere else, I would use the third option. Of course, otherwise what's the point of a PLA? Therefore we're going to choose extract elements to a folder. What does that mean I'm doing? I'm saving all of those library parts into a new external source which I then reference link. Yeah and then extract elements to a folder is probably the best option. Of course, just like before with saving libraries, then extract it to a really smart place. I don't want to put it on the desktop. I don't want to clog up my desktop and then have to move it and then lose it later. So I'm going to save that into my proper file structure somewhere where I can manage and 
um, look after.